Let the river flow. God said in his word that we are to be living vessels of praise, worshiping him in spirit and truth. So how are we as vessels? Are we broken? It says in the word that we don't need to be broken sisters, but rather vessels that can hold the living water of the Holy Spirit that flows out of our belly. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and he rose again on the third day, out of your belly will flow living waters. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you let the Holy Spirit have his way in you in your life, then there is nothing that can stop you. The presence of the Almighty flows through you like a mighty rushing river, and it just flows life. Living water is life, the life that God intended for us to have, and the life that God wants us to share all over the world. Now think about this, it is his joy that is our strength, right? And we draw the water out of the wells of salvation. There is an endless river that flows constantly, and when you are connected to God, and when the Holy Spirit and you connect, the river flows out of your belly the holy words of God. The waters will come forth out of you and lives change because of God's word, because God's word convicts and sanctifies people. Once you come under the conviction of God, there is no turning back. You do not want to go back to where you were once you operate through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit manifests through you, living waters flow. It's so amazing to think about. Sometimes people can't even fathom it, but God through you operates. Ezekiel speaks about how the river flows. It flows like from, at first to the ankles, and then it goes to your waist, and then it goes over your head, and you're swimming in the living water of God, the fresh living water of God. It speaks in the scripture that will flow into the Dead Sea. What is the Dead Sea? It's salt. It is dead. Nothing, nothing lives in the Dead Sea. That's a great way to say it. It's the Dead Sea. Nothing can live in salt water, and salt water kills. But the fresh living water of God will flow into the Dead Sea, spiritually, and then the salty sea will live. If you are dead unto Christ, and all of a sudden you say, Okay, I accept him. I will channel my salt water to the fresh water of God from the throne of heaven. Let the water flow through. You are alive again, you live and you declare the works of the Lord fearlessly and boldly because all of a sudden the salt is now becoming fresh water, fresh water flows through you, and out of your belly flows living water. Amen. Healing waters, if you are sick spiritually and physically, remember God is life and healing waters will flow through you. That's how powerful the living river of God is when it flows through your life. You walk in the power of God. You cannot have a sorry spirit attitude. It does not exist in you. So how is your vessel? How is you able to hold the living water? If it has cracks in it and your walk with Christ is not perfect and true, the water will begin to leak. And you'll have holes in your cistern and you'll just flow out and you have nothing. That's why it's important to make sure that your heart is right with God. Do you seek God's kingdom first? Do you put God first? Where is your heart? Whatever you think in your heart is whatsoever you are. So what do you think? Do you think of good things, godly things? What you put before your eyes whatsoever is true, lovely, honest, and of a good report. Think about these things, my friends. That is how you keep your vessel crack-free, and it does not leak. So you want your cup to run over? Do you want your vessel to run over? Seek God's kingdom and out of you will come living water. And that water is meant to feed the lost. It's meant to change lives. Once people get in contact with living water, their lives are fundamentally changed forever because they said, Okay, I will cut a channel from my dead sea to the living water of God. Once you do that, your life is changed forever. For us in the last days to be vessels pure and holy, uncracked, unblemished. Why does God want you to be holy? Because God cannot live in you or through you without being cleansed first. You're cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. You are purified, you are clean, and now you have to live a holy life as a sacrifice of praise under Him. We are vessels of worship, declaring the works of the Lord. 
If you are a vessel declaring the works of the Lord that have holes in them, you are a big hypocrite. And you cannot fundamentally tell people to live a holy and just and true life unless you do as well. Remember what Christ said? The beam in my eye and then my brother's eye. So if you say you have sin in your life, well, look at your sin first. If you want to change the many lives of everyone around you, sanctify yourself and dedicate yourself to God. Don't have one foot in the world and one foot in God's world. You've got to totally and unequivocally give yourself over. Don't fall to the distractions of the enemy. Satan wants you to fall constantly so that he can ruin your testimony, but praise God. We all go through trials and tribulations, but once you have gone through the fire, you are refined as gold. Let the people see the works that God has done in your life and how he has fundamentally changed you from where you were to who you are now. That is a living testimony that is worth spreading. And people will say, I want that too. You have living water. I want to immerse myself in living water and let the Spirit of God flow through me. You know, it says in the last days, when Christ returns to earth, he will destroy the enemies out of the Spirit and the word of his mouth. Enemies shall fall, and they will be no more because God's word is sanctified and holy and true. And the judgment that falls upon them will not be pretty. You see, God is righteous, and whatever comes out of his mouth is righteous. And you know why a hard-hearted sinner does not like to hear the words of Christ is because they know it convicts their hearts and they strongly turn away from him the best they know how. Their flesh is weak, they have nothing to go on, and Christ is the only way they can escape their sins and damnation. So what do they do? Many of them choose not to receive Christ, but then some do. That's why it says to pray for those that despitefully use you, pray for your enemies, right? Because once they taste and see that the Lord is good, their lives are changed forever. God wants all in his kingdom to be covered. And yet people say, I have enemies that I hate and despise. Well, if you have hate in your heart and you despise certain people, you're not going into heaven. People will say, I've done so many great and wonderful things. But did you forgive a certain person for their trespasses against you? Forgive those who have caused us to have offenses or have been offended by what they said or did. God said to do that. God said, if you can't forgive those who've done you wrong, how can I forgive you of your sins? That's a crack in your vessel. He can't operate in you if you are a cracked vessel. And if you have a crack in your vessel, what are some of the foxes that spoil your vine? Don't let cracks in your vessel hinder you from living the life God wants you to live. Because you know a vessel with holes just looks ugly. Your life is ugly. Operate the way God wants you to operate by being holy, righteous, and true. You know, people say, I am saved by grace. I don't have to do certain things. Yes, we are all saved by grace, but sin does happen. Temptations of the enemy will rise many times. So how, how are you when you go through these trials and tribulations? How is your life? We constantly fall, yes but thank God for his mercy and grace. But if you don't fundamentally change from where you were at and learn the lesson, Jesus said, go and sin no more. He gives you mercy and grace, yes. But he also tells you to learn from your mistakes and don't do them again. That's the life we are to live. We're constantly learning, constantly applying Christ's word in us. So let the river flow and let the Holy Spirit come and let him move in power through you. Because it says in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm going to pour out my living water onto all who are thirsty, all who are weak, all who need rejuvenation in their life. Those who drink his water will never thirst again. Seek the living water and you'll never thirst again. Don't be afraid about sharing the gospel because people are going to try to argue with you about many things. But always come back to the point, you could have a fundamentally different life if you follow Jesus.